Depending on how good your memory is, you may or may not recall a story we made five years ago about a tiny group of extraordinary people who can remember every minute detail of their lives stretching back decades, where they were and what they did on any particular day in any particular year. Scientists are intrigued by this rare ability and since our story, the number of people diagnosed with highly superior autobiographical memory has grown from 10 to 60. It includes the first and only Australian. Becky Sharrock's mind retains so much detailed information, you'll be amazed. But while the idea of a super memory might sound appealing, it can also be a curse. Harry Potter World at Universal Studios in Hollywood. Oh wow, so this is Harry Potter land. Yes, and I'd say it'd have to be my favourite place in the entire world. <laughs> it's the mecca for any true fan. A land filled with witches and wizards, yet none have the powers of oh, Becky yeah. Sharrock. The Forbidden Journey. The 26-year-old, all the way from Logan, Queensland, has total recall of every day of her life. How does it work? Say I gave you a date, the 5th of November 2008, what happens? The 5th of November 2008 was a Wednesday. And I just heard on the news that Barack Obama had become the US president. Tell me about your day on the 3rd of April 2005. The 3rd of April um, 2005 being a Sunday, that's when I heard that Pope John Paul II died. And it was a week after Easter and I still had some chocolate to eat and, yeah. And are you reliving that memory over again right now? Yeah, Is I'm just retasting the chocolate. <laughs> Growing up, Becky had no idea her strong memory was so unique. And while constantly reliving her past tormented her, her at times odd behaviour was always put down to her autism. Yeah, my teen years, I'd say, were the most painful of my life. You know, kids can be cruel, they'd say words like retard. You remember every fight, every harsh word ever spoken. Yeah. I could be walking outside on a day when I should feel happy and all of a sudden I could be in tears because my mind's back to being seven years old and someone at school took my lollipop. Oh, and I just re-experienced the emotions again. Did you ever share with anyone what was going on inside your head? I never really thought there was any need to ask. You know, in the same way, you don't really feel there's a need to ask, is it normal to breathe? Or... Becky is the first and only Australian you know, diagnosed with highly superior autobiographical memory. What's really impressive is she can recite every single word from every chapter in all seven Harry Potter books. So the first book. Now, chapter 17. Do you know how that chapter starts? Okay, chapter 17's The Man With Two Faces. And it starts off, it was Quirrell. You gasped, Harry. Quirrell smiled, his face wasn't twitching at all. Me, he said calmly. I wondered whether I'd be meeting you here, Potter. Well, next to him, who would suspect? Next to him, who would suspect? p p p p p stuttering Professor Quirrell. p p p stuttering Professor Quirrell. Nice performance, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Clearly, I'm making this too easy, so I switch it around okay. and give Becky just one line. Keep your voice down, said Harry crossly. I just need to sort of fine tune it, all right? That was chapter 26, the second task in the Goblet of Fire. 
I mean, that took you no time at all. It's just stuck in my mind, just, but I think in a very sequential way, so I think very much like chapters. What's it like to live with someone who remembers everything? Oh, it's really hard. It is so hard because it, the autism, I think, makes it a little bit more difficult because she's very literal. Would you like a biscuit with this too? Um, which biscuits? For a long time, Mum Janet couldn't understand Becky's extraordinary ability to recall insignificant events from years earlier. So she will ask me a question, and I do swear sometimes she does it to test the response. You know how kids do? If, what, do I get the same response back? But hers are years apart. So she'll ask me a question and then she stops, I'll answer and she'll stop dead. That's not what you answered last time. And last time was? Well, five years ago. And I'm like, well, I can't remember last time. So then it's, well, why can't you remember it? You said it. To her, it's so strange that we forget. It was Janet who saw our 60 Minutes story in 2011. Back then, only 10 people in the world had been proven to have highly superior autobiographical memory. But she knew immediately that Becky had this very rare gift. This was it, the defining moment, I think. What were you hoping they could do for Becky? Well, because she'd always struggled with past and memories and reliving experiences. Initially, I thought, oh, if they can figure out how it's happening, maybe they can turn it off. The 8th of September 1985 was a Sunday. It's like 85 all of a sudden kind of lines itself up and I see the whole calendar sort of fall into place. The Challenger disaster. Um, Tuesday, January 28th, 1986. And the Super Bowl was the Sunday before. For a touchdown! Can you remember what you were thinking about when you watched this segment? I didn't really understand what was so unusual about that kind of recall. Yeah. Because I thought everybody could do it. There's a lot we just don't know. But that's, but that's science. I mean, this is 10 billion neurons quadrillion or so connections, and that's barely scratching the surface of the complexity here. Nobody's given us an owner's manual. And try to, you may want to slide forward just a little bit. Yeah. Your knees are going to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Craig Stark is part of the team at the University of California, which discovered this memory phenomenon 11 years ago. Excellent, and right about there. Since then, 60 people have been diagnosed worldwide. But Becky is the only one with autism. We don't know if people like Becky are, are born with this sort of enhanced connection or whether this happens as a result of spending a lot of time and having some of this ability. There's a still a bit of a chicken and an egg problem that we're trying to work on right now. I'm surprised. I thought there'd be a section of the brain that was enlarged or more active than ours. Exactly, and that's what we initially thought. What we've seen so far is that there are some differences in someone like Becky's brain versus someone like our brain in some of the connectivity between these regions. In so the messages that pass between different sections of the brain. Exactly. Professor Stark hopes Becky's unusual memory will help his team unlock the many secrets of the mind. We so often study people, it's like, oh, amnesic patients or something like this in which they have a deficit. But by studying folks like her, we do get to see that other side. So the more we know about it, the greater opportunity we'll have to exactly. fix it, whether that is post-traumatic stress, Alzheimer's, depression. Exactly. We need to be able to understand how the basics work to have any hope of actually being able to fix it. American Marky Pasternak is 22. She remembers every day of her life since the age of 10. Like Becky, she struggled as a teenager. The ice rink was her happy place. <laughs> Remember our spot? Back nice and scary. I just can't talk and scared at the same You're time. You're totally fine. It's like walking and chewing gum. <laughs> no, I'm but those tougher years as a teenager that you were talking about. Yeah. Did this help? Yeah, uh, skating helped a lot. Marky says her memory condition is like really intense time travel. 
But since being diagnosed 18 months ago, she's learning to control it. I'm interested to know how you go with relationships. <laughs> uh, I date quite a bit. I really like to date. So you remember your first kiss? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you know... Wait, um, is that a good memory or a bad memory? <laughs> it got better. <laughs> now it's time to see how good Marky's memory is. What happened on February 6, 2011? The Packers won the Super Bowl! Yes! Touchdown, Pittsburgh! What happened on the 29th of October, 2012? Um... It was a Monday. Correct. Um... Oh... Was that Hurricane Sandy? Yeah, that was Hurricane Sandy. I was actually dating a guy at that point uh, who was out from Philadelphia. I soon learn Marky remembers everything about any day I ask her. I literally bought him a hat and I was like, you have to wear this because it goes with this thing. It was like this pinstriped kind of cowboy hat looking thing and he hated it. The level of detail she can recall is exhausting. And then I wrapped it up for him and gave it to him for Christmas, so. <laughs> That's how you remember Hurricane Sandy. That's how I remember Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Hat. <laughs> so, I would hate to ever get into an argument with you. Oh no, because I can remember what you said and how you said it, so don't even try me. <laughs> Until now, Marky has never met anyone else with her amazing memory. Neither has Becky Sharrock. This is yeah. like... Overwhelming. Uh, so wait, when's the first year you can remember? The first year I can remember is the year I was born. I can remember all my birthdays from my first. Wow. To now. You get wow. the feeling these are two kindred spirits coming together. Wait, do you do something also like on New Year's at all? Yeah, yeah. I find New Year's really weird because it feels like I go back in time. Yeah! Because oh it's gosh. like going from December... The, the way we relive things emotionally, was we're, we're so alike. Was it a moment of, finally, yeah. here's someone like me who understands me? And I can just talk to her and she goes, I get that too. OK, here's my Harry Potter-themed <laughs> room. You're not kidding when you say you love Harry Potter. Oh, yeah. Becky is slowly oh, learning to accept this extraordinary ability of hers. And while it was something that once crippled her, just knowing that what she has has a name and that she's not alone is all the magic this memory wizard needs. Remembering everything, is it a gift or a curse? Being more of a pessimist, I tend to go to the negative first, but now I'm training myself to go to the positive because mm. I don't like being a whinger and a whiner and I don't like, um, you know, missing good things in life because of bad memories that come mm. back. You know the rest of us look at it like you've got a superpower. <laughs> yeah, that I'm still struggling to comprehend just realising it's not normal, let alone realising that it's extremely rare. It's just, it is mind-boggling for me.